Hi, my name is Pat Lavery and I'm one of the assistant stage managers for All College Theater's production of Hamlet. We're running here in the Don Evans Studio Theater, aka the Black Box in Kendall Hall, uh, from Tuesday, October 9th through Saturday, October 13th. Right now it's Thursday, October 11th. It's been a good run so far. The show uh, goes up tonight in about eight hours. It's about 12 o'clock noon. And uh, I'm going to take you on a little uh, backstage tour of the show and uh, show you how the set was assembled and, and all that kind of stuff. All right. So for the show to happen, uh, everything, everything has to originate from this booth behind me right up there. Now that booth, I believe, is, is 12 feet off the ground. I'm, I'm not sure about that. But that's where our head stage manager, Carrie Galley, sits, and she calls the cues for the lighting and the sound. So there are CD players up there, and there's also a, an entire light board. And if you look up, I believe there's about 150 lights used for this show. It's really, it's really an extensive lighting plot, and there's all different kinds of colors and patterns and just different ways to light the stage. Now, if you are familiar with Hamlet, it's... It's a very dark show. It's one, of, it's one of Shakespeare's greatest tragedies, if not his greatest. And so we've chosen a lot of murky type lighting for this show. A lot of, uh, a lot of dark purples, um, red for a lot of Hamlet's monologues. Um, the, the set, as you can see, is, is done in a stone pattern type of grayscale. Um, so it's, it's, very, um, it's very dark. Is, is the point that I'm trying to make. Now, if we, could, um, if we could get a closer look at these platforms. Now, the set is made up of all of these different shaped platforms, and they're all at different angles. And I know that our director, uh, Kate Patusek, uh, she worked diligently with our set designer, Ashley Gallagher, on, um, on creating a set that would be unconventional, but also, you know, very accessible to people sitting in the audience. And as you can see, the audience is in the round. Uh, they're seating, now what the round means is there is seating on all four sides. Uh, this is the first one that I've done personally in the round, and it's worked pretty well so far, I think. Anyway, so this platform that I have my foot on right now, um, for instance, is made out of wood, and it's covered in a cloth material called muslin. Now what happens with muslin is you glue it to a platform, you glue it to a wooden platform, and then you paint it. And what happens after that, and why you didn't really hear a cloth sound when I banged on the platform, is because the muslin stretches, and it becomes very, very well attached to the platform, so that, like, there's no, there's no give between the platform and the cloth. And the platforms were painted a shade of gray, they were then uh, sponged down and then spattered over, all with different shades of colors. Let's walk around a little bit. Now, as you can see, we've got some columns here and a bench. We also have a, uh, a plank, which is used several times in the first act. We take it down before the end of the second act because this spot down here becomes Ophelia's grave. And as you can see, we've got all this black masking up around the audience to disguise the actor entrances. Uh, this right here is what's called a scrim, and I'm gonna explain a little bit more about a scrim to you uh, in a second. Uh, right there we've got the um, seal of Denmark, and this is our basic set. It's, it's constructed of platforms that are six inches, pretty much, uh, one up from the other. The one that I'm standing on right now is six inches off the ground, we've got 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and the highest one is 42. I believe the one back there, which is where the king and queen sit, is a 48-inch platform, um, or although, although it might be 42, I'm not sure. But um, it's going to be dark for a second, but why don't, we, why don't we head around backstage, and I'll show you. Now watch your step here, because right here we have the stretcher that we use for Ophelia's funeral. And uh, four actors actually carry her out on stage. Now let's let's proceed back here. Here are some stage manager lights. Not uh, not on right now, but if they were, and let me try to see if I can find the switch in the dark. See, they have this nice blue light, 
that's just light enough for the actors and the stage managers to walk through, but not light, not, uh, light enough to bleed through the curtain or kind of diffuse onto that area back there where the audience can see it. And there's different stage manager lights lined up throughout this walkway, okay? Right back here, we have the prop table, one of the two prop tables in the show. And this holds uh, cups and baskets and books and pouches and recorders and whatever else you want. There are also props stored under the prop table. And of course, please do not handle the props if they're not one of yours. We also have a diagram of what's on each prop table and what's under each prop table so that everybody knows at the end of the night where their stuff goes back, okay? So I'm gonna take you around here. Now this is what we call, this thing is an eight foot high platform. It's called the ghost platform. The ghost of Hamlet's father uh, uses this platform exclusively. He appears both under the platform, which if I open up here, see this is the scrim that I showed you before. And what happens with a scrim is when it is front lit, which means when lights are shining on it, there's no light coming through and you can't see anything behind it. When it's backlit, and you see here are two uh, lights with green gels in them back here. When it's backlit, you can see everything behind it. And that's what happens with the ghost. He comes in through here, they light up the lights, he's got marks where to stand, and you can see him through the scrim where you couldn't previously see him before. We also have the ghost appearing on top of the eight foot platform. And of course the scrim goes all the way up to the ceiling. So again, we have marks for him and a microphone there for him. And we backlight the thing and you can see him through the scrim, but you couldn't see him get up there because lights weren't on yet. Okay. Go down, this is a steep staircase right here. This is another actor walkway. Now we're passing behind the section of the audience where the um, where the seal of Denmark was, where I showed you before. Let's see, down here we have what's called a page mic. And one of the assistant stage managers will use this page mic to page down to the actors downstairs in the green room and in, and in the makeup room to say, uh, for instance, 10 minutes until places, um, five minutes until curtain, um, 10 minute inter intermission, you know, pr pretty much make any announcements exclusively to the cast that uh, they want to make. Right here are two pulleys for chandeliers that we use uh, during the show. I'm not gonna try to get involved with them because I don't handle that, but um, any indoor scene, the chandeliers come in and we just pull them down and they come in and we pull them out and they go out. This is our quick change costume rack. As you can see, there are a lot of costumes. There are a lot of actors in the show playing more than one character, and there are a lot of actors in the show wearing more than one costume as the same character. So we need to have this up here rather than downstairs in the basement just so that uh, they can change their costumes as quickly and efficiently as possible. This is what we've deemed as the sword table. Now, if you don't know about Hamlet, there is a sword fight at the end of the show. Uh, also, in this particular production, we have, um, I believe, close to 15 different characters uh, carrying a prop sword at one point or another. And those swords have to be uh, cleaned and wiped off and oiled every night uh, before and after the show uh, to make sure that they remain in good condition. And during the show, uh, the actors will lay their swords on this table when they're not using them. Um, we have every sword tagged with the, uh, the character's name, and they just take the tags off before they go on stage and put them in their belts. The belts we store down here. We also have gloves for the actors who uh, are involved in the sword fight at the end of the show. So here is our other prop table. And as you can see, there are bloody handkerchiefs and lanterns and bags and uh, more columns back here. Uh, a lute. Do not put anything here. And another diagram. More stage manager lights. Now this is this is our entrance to the king and queen platform. 
we go up here, the king and queen enter through here, and now you have a nice, a nice top view of the set. I was sitting down there when we started. Now I'm up here. Seals are over there. Exits over there. Seating on all four sides. And uh, that's Hamlet. So uh, I hope if you came to see the show that you enjoyed it. And uh, that completes our tour. Behind me you see one of our sword lockers for Hamlet. Now what we keep in here are what are called baldrics, which are belts that are used to carry the swords, which I have one in my hand, and swords and various other uh, accompanying pieces. Uh, there are just straight regular belts on which we place things called frogs, and those are used for um, our broadswords. Uh, also, the character Hamlet uh, has a dagger that he carries, part of uh, the second act. Uh, so let me show you, just very quickly, uh, how you put these on. Okay, this is um, King Claudius's baldric. Now he is he's played by Rudy Basso, and Rudy is a is a little bit bigger than me, so this isn't really going to fit. But um, you drape the baldric over your shoulder and take the sword, and very carefully. I can't even reach this. Very carefully, you just drop it in the hole right like that, and Clearly, if you're not five foot six, this uh, this sword won't drag on the ground. Okay. So we have thirteen uh, what are called costume rapiers, and this is one of them, and thirteen baldrics to match. Baldrics is uh, baldric is just a fancy word for one of these belts. Uh, we also have two broadswords, which are used by the ghost of Hamlet's father and um, Ca Captain Fortinbras in Norway. And we have a dagger, as I said, and two combat swords, which are used by Hamlet and Laertes in the final duel at the end of the show. So we have two lockers in here, down in the men's locker room in Kendall Hall. Let me just throw this back in the locker. You have to store them sword side, uh, sword side up. That's the, that's the recommended way to store one of your swords. And we try to, we try to just keep to all the regulations. There are a bunch of maintenance rules and, and everything that we need to follow every night. We need to clean them down and oil them, as I said, every night before and after the show. Here's a checklist of the characters that have swords and what swords they have. And as I said, everything is tagged so that everybody knows whose is whose. There are little pictures of the uh, the hilts or the handles of the swords so that if your sword happens not to be tagged you can still identify it and I print out a new one of these every night and we go from there so that's a little bit about the sword combat and the sword storage in Hamlet